Welcome to the lab. Do you have a MacBook that doesn't start properly? Maybe you've taken it to a repairer. Maybe they said it couldn't be fixed. Maybe they tried to sell you a brand new MacBook. We're going to go through a few things that can kill a MacBook Air today that can be fixed for under $100. This covers the A1369 or A1466, basically airs from 2010 to 2017. This makes the assumption that your MacBook has no previous liquid damage or it hasn't been dropped. This video is for MacBook Airs that have trouble starting. But if you have a MacBook Air that has trouble holding its charge, we have a separate video for that and that is in the description down below. Otherwise, let's get started. One quick initial check that you can do is uh, put your MacBook on its side and check the charging port for any obstructions. It's quite common for staples to get stuck in here and pieces of wire. And all you have to do is get the old tweezers in there and take out the obstruction. What happens is uh, when the plug goes in, uh, because there's uh, a little bit of metal in there or a staple it doesn't make initial contact and it can make it look like uh, your MacBook Air is actually dead when it's not. And I see a few of these come through every every year. It goes out to the repairer and they have the uh, obligatory staple stuck in there, a piece of metal. And then I get my claws on it and I fix it within 30 seconds. It's one of those common things that the actual repairer yeah, totally misses. Also, while we are checking the uh, charging plug here, have a look at these pins here. One, two, three, four, five. Make sure they're all shiny uh, and they look all serviceable. When you have a faulty MacBook with a faulty battery, uh, sometimes these pins can actually get burnt out. And this is what burnt pins look like. So you see this pin here and this pin here are completely burnt out due to battery malfunction and excessive um, current or energy draw. And what actually happens is you have so much uh, current going through these pins here is it actually creates heat because of the resistance between the connection of the pins and it actually burns these pins out. So in this case, you'll be up for a new DC in board on your MacBook and probably a, re a battery replacement as well. Something else to check is check the charger itself. Maybe you've got a, a spare charger at home or a friend down the road that may have a, another charger. Make sure it's the same type. We can see on the face of the charger, it's a MagSafe 2. So obviously you only use a MagSafe 2 and we can see it's a 45 watt MagSafe 2. So if your friend down the road has a 60 watt MagSafe 2 charger, that's fine to use as long as you go up in watts. But uh, you can't go down if you're looking for a uh, replacement charger. Check the connector here itself. Make sure all the pins are nice and shiny. Make sure there's no obstruction around the face of the connector itself. No staples or, or metal fragments or screws or anything of that nature. Make sure it's an original Apple charger as well. Uh, and you can tell that by uh, the little Apple symbol here. I'm not a big fan of genuine uh, parts and things of that nature, but this is one case where you actually need the genuine charger. And you can get the, the cheaper charges off eBay, the cheap, cheery and Chinese. Most of the time they're cheap because they're crap um, and they do, do more damage than good. If those previous steps haven't got your MacBook Air up and running, we're going to need to open it up and check the battery and you're going to need the following tools. First item is a P5 pentalobe screwdriver. And this will be used to crack the chassis. The next item is a T5 Torx screwdriver. And this will be used to take the screws out of the battery. First step is we have to flip our MacBook over so we can actually see the bottom. 
and we have to remove 10 screws with our P5 pentalobe screwdriver. Eight of those screws being short, which are these ones here, and the other two screws being long. So let's start to take these screws out right now. With all screws being out, let's take off the bottom plate. We've cracked our MacBook open and we have two major areas. We have the logic board area, which is this section here. Try and keep your fiddly fingers out of here. And the second area is the battery area here. And this is what supplies the power when your MagSafe connector isn't plugged in. So what we do now uh, to check why your MacBook is not starting is we do some half split diagnostics or diagnostics through isolation and that's as simple as unplugging the battery. The good thing about the A1369 and the A1466 MacBooks uh, they will actually start without the battery. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the battery out of the equation and we're going to uh, unplug the connector here and we're going to move on to that next. And it's nice and simple. All we have to do is grab hold of this tab here and pull straight back. Flip your MacBook back over again. Pop it open. Plug it in. Hit the power button. If the MacBook starts with the battery disconnected, um, it's most likely a battery fault. Um, if it doesn't start with the battery disconnected, it is most likely a fault with the logic board um, and you would have to take that to a, uh, a board repairer. If it is the battery, let's go through steps on uh, how to replace that. We remove the five screws that retain the battery itself and we'll need the Torx T5 screwdriver for this process. Take note that this one, this one, and this one are long screws, and the other two here and here are short screws. So let's start taking the screws out. The next step is to remove the battery. So all we have to do is grab the battery by its tab nice and carefully, pull upwards and take the battery out. We now put in the uh, new battery. Now I got this off eBay here. So um, obviously it's a non-genuine battery, but uh, the rule of thumb is um, if you pay that $80 Australian or $55 uh, United States dollars, you'll get yourself a fairly good quality battery. Always look at the reputation of the eBay seller and have a look at the feedback. One good sign on this battery is we have a little barcode here and we have a little quality control sticker. So what we'll do is we'll pop this battery in and uh, we'll see how we go. We'll plug our connector back in, push it home. We'll put our screws back in, starting with the long screws first. And then we put in our short screws. And this is the best part. We rip off the protective plastic film. We put on the bottom plate 
and we're going to put four screws in one in each corner just the short screws and this enables us to put it back together temporarily just to make sure the battery is working we then flip our MacBook over open it up plug it in make sure our light comes up it may start up so we want to shut it down then we let it charge for a good 30 minutes after 30 minutes we unplug the charge cable and then we start the MacBook up. Before logging on, we need to quickly check two things. Firstly, check to see that you have charge in your battery and that your battery isn't crossed out. Our charge cable is in and you can see our little charge symbol has come up. So that tells us our battery is charging correctly. So what we do next is log on to your MacBook and we will check the charge cycle count. If you click the Apple symbol here and then select about this Mac and then click system report. If we click power and then have a look at the cycle count you can see it's two and that tells us that this battery is brand new if you're happy with the new battery in your macbook it's time to put in the rest of the screws these ones being short and the last two being long at the end of the day. It's not as hard as the repairers make it out to be. And hopefully this has fixed your problem. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to share and subscribe. And we'll see you next time in the lab.